Hi, I'm Kyle Ingham from The Distilled Man. I wanted to talk to you about barbershops. And you probably noticed in the last few years as there's been kind of a resurgence in all these new things for men to help us take better care of ourselves. There's bespoke suit companies springing up everywhere. There's new men, uh, you know, men's skincare products. And we've also seen um, kind of the return of some traditional things like the classic barbershop. But the funny thing is, like, guys aren't really used to kind of being in the driver's seat when it comes to our appearance. Take the barbershop, for instance. You're not used to really specifying what you want. You know, it's like, hey, Jack, uh, why don't you do what you usually do? And I'll just uh, kind of zone out until you put that white powdery stuff on my neck and then I have to pay you. You know, but it doesn't have to be that way. The more you know about a classic barbershop, the better experience you can have. And I actually was really lucky I was able to sit down with uh, one of the greatest master barbers here in San Francisco, Shorty Maniachi, who owns J.P. Kempt Barber Social. So Shorty shares his perspective on barbershops and gives some great tips on how you can get the most out of the experience. Don't forget, if you like this video, please hit like below and subscribe to the Distilled Man YouTube channel if you want to see more videos like this. All right, without any further ado, take it away, Shorty. I'm Shorty Maniachi. I'm master barber and owner of J.P. Kim uh, Barber Social. What I like to try to get across to people is, is that they, they kind of do know what they want. I also have somebody sit in my chair and say, I don't know what I want, you do what you want. And I'm like, okay, let's shave it, right? Number two. And they're like, done. Uh, no, that's right. Not what I want. Exactly, exactly. Or they'll say, hey, do you think that's the best thing? I was like, no, this is the easiest thing, you know? Right, right. It's like, uh, I will work with them and, uh, and talk to them about what we think might look good on them and so on and so forth. But for the most part, they have an idea of what, how difficult their hair is to style in the morning, what they want. Do they want wash and go? Do they want something they take some time on combing? Things like that. We look at their, you know, their clothing and, and uh, the way they hold themselves, what they do for a living. You can come in and, and say, hey, you know, I like, I like it a little bit tighter on the side. Try to remember what you had done last time. Um, unfortunately, everything's by numbers now. So, so you can come in and say, hey, the last barber did a three. It's been like four weeks since my last haircut. We have an idea of how fast hair grows, you know, an average. Um, so that's going to help us out. Uh, try to remember what they used on the side. Know that you like to part your hair or don't part your hair. You know, and, and you know your difficult areas. Hey, my hair pokes up back here. Most people's do. You know, hey, my hair wants to stick out through here. Or also know what products you use. You know, uh, you know what is it that you're achieving? Are you looking for a chiseled look? Are you looking for a rounder jaw? Are you looking for a tighter mustache? Just things being prepared when you come to the barber saves that time and gives you more time to actually have the service um, provided to you. Say I want a two fade, right? And that means it's going from two to fading into longer through the top. Taper, the taper on the neckline means no no line whatsoever. It's just it's faded into the to the neck, so there's no line whatsoever. Squared back, round back, uh, over the ears. Uh, medium sideburn, right? Know where you want your sideburns. You know, bringing in a picture, we love pictures. It makes our job easier. We get an idea of what you're wanting to look like, and we know that you know that you're not gonna look like Brad Pitt. You know what I'm saying? But you're gonna have kind of the same style. Brad Pitt's hair. Okay. Yeah, it's like hair. Or, yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Go, I don't know, go see his trainer. <laughs> you know, if there is a comfort zone to get out of, um, and you want to try something different, it's, it's as easy as looking at the television or looking at movies or looking at magazines and going, wow, I like the way this guy's hair looks. I like the way this guy's beard looks. You know? But we gotta gain their trust first. There's nothing that I can do. Have you come in and you say, hey, I'm ready for a tra change. I don't know who you are. I gotta get to know you first. You know, we gotta start to understand each other. Um, give your barber about two, three cuts because by the third cut, they know your head, they know your pattern, the hair patterns, they know the bumps, the lumps, the, the everything about, well, the most about you, and then they can actually give you one of the better haircuts you've ever had. I like to use a straight razor, and uh, the safety razor as well, because it allows me to just slow down and kind of like chill out and take my time and be with me. 
You know what I'm saying? I lock my door. My wife knows not to come into my into my uh, bathroom. So it's like this is shorty time. Right? So with the with the shaving, having somebody else shave you, yeah, sure, it can be intimidating, right? But today it's like I said, not a necessity. It's uh, it's a luxury. So if it's something you've always wanted to try, trust that we're gonna be able to do okay. It's okay to ask who's who's better with the straight razor there. You know, but a lot of barber shops these days there are hairdressers and there are barbers, mm -hmm. right? Um, barbers are trained and licensed to use a straight razor. There usually is a master barber on board, which is usually the owner. Usually, don't come in thinking that it's going to be it's going to be as painless as a Mach four or three or whatever they're called going over your skin. It's it's not going to be painful, but it's not going to be it's not going to be a glide of a. Of a quadruple razor you know it's it's a single blade what's great about it is that we pay more attention to your hair growth right which way does it grow how's this you know our hair grows in many different directions on our face i don't care who you are the barber gets in there and looks at that and gets every single little hair there will be some that are like i don't like getting my hair cut at all but um if you ask most people they're going to say i always feel better after my hair you know, my haircuts are guaranteed to get you laid or a job. You know, that's it. Um, because that exact thing, it's a confidence booster. Uh, one of my clients, I used to have that little um, saying, it was like, uh, my haircut's guaranteed to get you laid. Okay. And this kid, he went to another city. He met a girl. They hooked up. This is right after the haircut. Right after the haircut. Like a couple days after the haircut. They hooked up. Stayed the night. I went to breakfast, and she told him, the only reason I even noticed you was your haircut. But, but I've, had, I've had people come back and say, hey, your haircut helped me get a job, things like that. And, and I, I, I'll play along with it going, yeah, of course, right? It's me. Hey, oh, hey, just let me touch you and you'll get a job or you'll get late, right? Uh, the reality is that you just feel better about yourself. You feel a little bit cleaner. You feel like, you know... Whatever, it's like getting a new suit. See what other people are saying about it. Look on Yelp. You know, just, you see somebody walking down the street, it's got a great haircut, say, hey, where'd you get your haircut? I really like your haircut. Looking for a barber. Do you recommend this guy? Do you recommend the place? Do you recommend, you know, ask about the place. Just look at who's cutting whose hair, how it looks, how clean is the place? You know, how friendly is the front desk? You know, do the barbers seem stressed out? Do they seem to be doing okay? Do people seem to be leaving here with a, with a smile on their face? Yeah, right? And now that we're actually starting to show more and more, we're getting off the couch, we're taking our hands off of our pants. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're showing our fashion. Also, we have to be something other than, you know, a man who's taking care of themselves. We have to be metrosexual, you know what I'm saying? Or, or straight, or homosexual, or probably... We're men. That's it. And we're taking care of ourselves and we care about ourselves. I've said this before. I've seen business skills go down. I've seen vast friendships happen. I've seen I've seen counseling between clients going on. You know what I'm saying? Just talking to each other. Um, in the past and in a lot of foreign countries now too, it's a place for guys to come and just chill out. Just get away for a second. And, you know, it's just like, hey, we're dudes. We're hanging out. It's a place to just come be social, man. It's like, come and sit down, stay off your fucking eyes, you know, talk to somebody. Alright, well as you can see, Shorty was a fun guy to interview. Hope you got a lot out of that video. If you like this video, please hit like below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the Distilled Man YouTube channel by hitting this button right here. And if you haven't gotten a copy already, you can click on screen right now and get a free copy of my ebook, 48 Hour Gentleman, your one weekend plan to more confidence, poise, and manly know-how. All right, well, thanks again for watching, and until next time.